There are two sides to Hong Kong, two dueling images. One shiny and new, a hypermodern city of glass and concrete. The other, older, low slung tenement blocks. Neon lights signaling mysterious intention. Night markets and strange food. Of course, this dichotomy is exaggerated. In truth, the dividing line between new and old in this city is so fuzzy as to be barely there. Bordered by mountains to the north and the harbor to the south, the Kowloon Peninsula is the heart of Hong Kong home to two million of its seven and a half million residents. We'll start towards the northern end at the Kowloon Walled City Park before checking out the new of West Kowloon and the old of Yamate. Today, there is a park and some exhibits, but once this area held one of the most infamous collections of buildings on earth, the Kowloon Walled City. It began as a Chinese military outpost, but over successive waves of mainland turmoil and foreign invasions, the walled city swelled with refugees. Effectively ungoverned, the place became a haven for vice, and Hong Kong's triads flourished here. But as the exhibits attest, this was a home to many, a place of community and commerce. Where the Kowloon Walled City once stood, today there is a park. What was once dark and crowded is today light and airy. Now an escape from the contemporary apartment blocks that Hong Kongers today call home. After the Walled City Park, do check out the surrounding area. Kowloon City is Hong Kong's Little Thailand. Your options for Thai food abound. And randomly, this area is home to a number of auto body shops. But I'm not here for Thai or tires. I chose lunch at Islam Food since 1959. Yes, that's the full name. I had the beef pies and the spicy sour soup with vermicelli noodles and beef brisket. Delicious. That was the past. Now let's glimpse a piece of the future. As I alluded, Hong Kong is a mix of the old and the new. Among the new is the West Kowloon Cultural District, a development built on mostly reclaimed land lying at the southwest tip of the Kowloon Peninsula. This is a visually striking part of the city with views of the island side. You can also get those views from the observation deck of the International Commerce Center, or ICC, Hong Kong's tallest building. Though at that height, bad weather can obscure. In a moment, you'll see those same views, but from ground level. I am drawn to the most architecturally interesting parts of the city. 
The built and natural environments of a place are part of what draws me into that place. If you feel similarly, please consider subscribing to the channel. I post a new video every week, exploring more places and passing on what I find. Join me and we'll tour the world together. The M Plus building is aesthetically interesting inside and out. After making a round of the outside of the building, be sure to pay a visit to the museum. There was a Yayoi Kasuma exhibit on when I visited, complete with the whimsical installations for which she is known. To be honest, those aren't so much to my taste. But they did have some excellent pieces of her painting, which I enjoyed immensely. There is also the Hong Kong Palace Museum, which is visually striking, but maybe less aesthetically pleasing than M+. The museum houses artifacts from the Forbidden City in Beijing, punctuating the connections between Hong Kong and mainland China. Don't leave the area without walking down to the water to check out the dining options. Or maybe just get a cup of coffee and enjoy the views before heading on. Next we'll visit one of the areas that screams local Hong Kong. There are a few things worth seeing in Yamate during the day. There's the wholesale fruit market and Shanghai Street with its kitchen supply stores. And there's the Tin Hao Temple. Those are all fine. And if you're in the area during the day, go and have a look. But Yamate really comes alive at night. Yes, Hong Kong is in every way a modern city, futuristic in some aspects, but it retains its vibrant street life. Maybe it's because the apartments are so small and often house multiple generations. Out is where people go for escape. In Hong Kong there's local and then there is local local. Someone born here to Chinese parents but educated abroad is local. Someone born here to expat parents may even be local as well. But they're not necessarily local local. Again, these concepts are nuanced. But Yamate is one of those places you can see the local local. The mahjong parlors and the fortune tellers and the karaoke streamers. My suggestion is just to walk around the area and soak it in. You can walk through the Temple Street night market, but don't have too many expectations just wander. I'll end with a couple of food recommendations. This place, Tibetan Fast Food, is a great place to grab a snack. If you want to sit down for a meal, try Hing Ki, which is known for its clay pot rice. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for future destination guides hotel impressions, and more.